watching Ari Aster's Midsummer was <gasps> uncomfortable. It has troubling moments. But there is something else at work. We just took these five minutes ago. And it changed how I see the movie. Look, the trees too, they're breathing. It's hidden in plain sight. And once you see it, you won't be able to unsee it. Welcome to the Director's Playbook. This video may have some graphic content. You've been warned. Let's begin. We first meet Danny when she's in a very precarious place in her relationship with Christian. Christian and his friends are planning to go to Sweden to attend a midsummer celebration, and Danny is pulled along as sort of the unwanted fifth wheel. In a typical horror movie, the scariest moments are dark and claustrophobic. <laughs> Our anxiety comes from the lurking unknown, hidden in the shadows. Ari Aster threw both of those rules out of the window. His self-described fairy tale is bright, lush, and wide open. It's dags for mat. But just because we can see everything, doesn't mean to say that we do see everything. <laughs> there is a second movie altogether, playing out in the background. We've seen movies with wide open spaces and dozens of extras before, but those are just extras milling around for atmosphere, serving very little storytelling purpose. But Ari Aster brilliantly activates the background. He uses it to keep us subconsciously, but constantly unsettled. No! The audience, just like the main characters, are presented with a completely foreign world. So much is unknown about this village, and the unknown can be terrifying. Why? This perpetual strangeness is most often embodied by behavior. What are these villagers doing? Why do they breathe like this? In this moment, we have two stories playing at once. Christian's belated birthday apology to Danny. Happy birthday to what? you. And the women behind them seeming to comfort an infant. But we're not quite sure. We imported the script into Studio Binder to investigate. We found it here, in this scene. Asta clues us in about the Hargus' strange behavior. They embrace. There is a moment where they rest their foreheads together. Note, throughout the film, the Hargus will communicate little things through subtly modulated expressions and gestures. These are their affects a language known only to them. As the writer, Astaire confirms that we aren't meant to understand the behavior, which works exceedingly well to create an ambiguous atmosphere. You'll also notice that a vast majority of the film is shot in full and wide shots, sometimes framing dozens of people at once. Let's see how Astor uses a wide open space with layers of action to tell multiple stories in a single shot. A group of men scatters ashes. We pull back and pan over to see Mark and Josh walking past a symbolic ritual in which a straw goat is chopped into pieces while others watch. It should be noted that in the script, this moment was written in as a separate scene. 
We can only guess why they chose to include this as a background action instead, but we can see the result. We dolly and pan around to see this man inexplicably gesturing, hey man. as Ulf carries the severed straw goat head. Yeah, they say you can do it, as long as you absolutely don't use any names okay. or the, the location is never wow. even hinted at. Okay. Yeah. And you'll have to sign an agreement to that. Further back, a group of people and seem to be conducting a tiny ritual of their own. Well, let's, we'll, we'll figure that out. I gotta go take a leak. Uh, here, can I ask you something? Now, uh, center framed, Ulf is burying the goat head as Christian appears to speak with him. Behind them, we see more backwards walking flower pickers. Love room. Yeah. As Christian walks towards Pella and Josh, we are greeted with a parade of animals. What's going on? Uh, the elders said you can do your thesis as long as you don't use the actual names or location. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, Matt watches their conversation and prepares what looks like a powder with a black mortar and pestle. I told him I'm totally fine. Breathe in. Perhaps the same concoction he gives Christian later. For your vitality. Yeah, I already told The him. foreground conversation mentions Maya. You know, I think my sister Maya is taking a liking to you. And we quickly rack focus to reveal her as one of the flower pickers. And actually she okay. just uh, got a big smindig last year. It basically means that you are allowed to have sex. Then Ulf spots Mark desecrating their sacred tree and the shot ends. In this single shot, we saw a total of 10 background elements. We aren't meant to be paying attention to any of those elements, but they're there, working on an almost subconscious level. So what are we supposed to learn from Ariasta? In so many movies, the background is just the background, and extras are just extras. We've been trained to ignore them. Asta used that training against us. He created an idyllic landscape full of bright light and colors, but juxtaposes that with disquieting ambiguity creating an unnerving viewing experience like no other. The next time you open up Studio Binder's shot listing app, give some extra thought to the background. There are many more Easter eggs hidden throughout Midsummer. What are your favorite scenes and what can we learn from them? Tell us what you found in the comments. I just really need to not be here right now. Just take some time yourself, okay? Here at Studio Binder, we believe in community. We welcome all newcomers. So subscribe, ring the bell, join us, and you'll feel like you've been crowned the May Queen. It's a bear, 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 it's a bear in a cage. Inside, no room to play on this lovely summer day. It's a bear, 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 it's a bear. It's a bear. It's a bear.